Evo, thanks for joining us today. So you're working with UN Environment, working on unlocking private sector finance um, to help our landscapes. So I know you've had a long history of working in this space. Can you just share some of your observations on how this has evolved? Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I coordinate the finance and um, private sector work for UN Environment on land use. Um, we've been working with both finance institutions, banks, uh, investors, insurance firms for quite a long time on how to improve their risk management, how to ultimately ensure that the impact on the natural environment is minimized through environmental, social and governance uh, criteria to really make sure that as they're lending to clients in the real economy or as they're investing in clients, that ultimately the impact is, uh, is being reduced. What we see now with our recent partnerships with BNP Paribas and also with Rabobank is that a number of uh, leading finance institutions really want to go beyond that and, and see how can we transform the way we are lent to or invest in agriculture and sustainable forestry in developing countries. So that is a shift away from pure risk management to more focused on how can we develop uh, lending products, how can we develop investment products mm -hmm. that really deliver the public good that we're seeking but at the same time are commercially viable. And what has been your approach to offer more commercially viable options to the private sector when it comes to investing in these landscapes? Well I think we're still in a very learning by doing phase uh, including for ourselves. There is no real as a class there's no real blueprint mm -hmm. for how to do this. Um, but what, um, what we need to do is really identify what are the types of activities that we want to see happening. Uh, in the case of palm oil, it means how can we stimulate replanting on existing land as opposed to seeing the continuous clearance of, uh, of forest and the cost and risk related to that replanting as opposed to forest clearance, how can they be met through the combination of both public finance and private capital from investment funds and from, from banks. Uh, and that is the phase we're in right now to determine the, the, the types of activities and the types of criteria that we are want to set to determine the environmental and social conditions and at the same time the financial risks and costs for the financial institutions that, and the supply chain companies that really need to be uh, minimized. Up until now, has those costs and the risks been too high for the private sector? What was some of the challenges holding them back to go all out? The main thing is that uh, there are real risks related to the transition to um, replanting where there is a certain wait period mm -hmm. for farmers where there's no income, mm -hmm. which that in then increases the risk for, um, uh, for, for banks mm -hmm. to lend, knowing that the borrower doesn't have an income for an X number of years. Uh, so that increases the risk for the borrower, mm -hmm. making it at the moment not financially uh, sustainable for a bank to, to do this at scale. And at the same time, the length of a loan or the length of an investment that really needs to change from, say, three to four to five years, all the way up to 10 or 12 years. Um, the longer the, the loan, uh -huh. the higher the risk for, uh, for the lender. Right. And how, how do you cover for that, uh, that difference in repayment, basically? Uh -huh. Uh, and that is something that we need, really need to, to focus on uh, right now. How come UN Environment um, is reaching out to the private sector? I know this is something you're working on. Is this a strategic decision from the top? What Im impacted it to look at this as something where it needed to, to put work and effort into? We remain uh, accountable to our member states, uh, and that is the core of UN Environment. Uh, but as part of addressing some of the most uh, defining challenges in the 21st century related to air pollution, uh, oceanic acidification, and also deforestation, we need to realize that uh, we need to work with both the public and the private sector. I think what we see is a shift inside the organization where we are much more interested in systematically engaging with uh, the finance institutions, uh, also with uh, agricultural uh, uh, firms, traders, um, to really together make that shift happen um, while ultimately uh, working with and remaining accountable to our member states, but simply broadening the number of stakeholders that we work with to ultimately tackle those, uh, those, uh, those, those big problems.